The current baddest man on the planet, Francis the Predator Ngannou, sprang forth from humble beginnings in his home of Cameroon and smashed contender after contender to become the 22nd UFC heavyweight champion of the world. Ngannou is hailed as the pinnacle of violence in the sport. Hard to argue given the amount of quick and brutal finishes on his record. However, many are quick to forget the part that he played in what is believed to be the worst heavyweight fight of all time. And he is often criticized for his lack of technique. Despite the gold around his waist, I'm currently unable to call him the undisputed champ due to his former training partner Cyril Gan's interim ascension. With their inevitable clash looming ever closer, it raises the question, how good is Francis Ngannou striking? What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Fight Dialogue. My name is Tim. So I'm going to be analyzing the striking skills of Francis Ngannou and full disclaimer, I'm going to be making some comparisons between him and Cyril Ghosn due to their upcoming fight and of course the now infamous history they have together. In order to break down his stand-up skills, I'm going to be looking at six key elements of striking as they relate to the sport of MMA. For each category, I give a score based on a scale from 1 to 10, and then at the end of the video, I take the average of those scores to give an overall grade. I base this grade off my own observations of their most recent fights of relevance and the quality of the opponents that they have faced. Once again, we will begin with defensive distancing. The first thing to note about Ngannou is that he is very rarely on the back foot, except when guys are trying to take him down. He's usually the one coming forward, and most of his opponents find it a much safer strategy to yield to his footwork rather than trying to force the opposite. In the handful of exchanges where we saw him have to deal with the forward pressure or the blitz of an opponent, plan A is to hold the line and fire back. The counterpunching game of Francis is respectable, and I will go into it in more detail later on in the video. I'm pointing it out now because it really is an excellent deterrent against pressure fighters, and those with aspirations of bullying the predator. Most heavyweights do not have very sophisticated footwork, so the let me bang bro strategy is for sure a viable one for that division. But it's not surprising to see this method fall apart against guys with fancier movement. Pivoting and angle changing around Ngannou's counters is really the only way that I can see to pressure him in an aggressive manner relatively safely. The range that Francis has the most trouble defending, in my opinion, is from the outside or kicking range. Many of his opponents have found success landing low kicks. I believe this to be a strong strategy to defeat Ngannou. It's definitely the more conservative approach, as we saw at work when Derek Lewis used this strategy in their fight. Pretty much the only strikes landed in that fight were the kicks on the outside. Besides the kicks, Francis has been cracked a bunch of times by straight and even overhanded punches that get launched at him from a distance by the more explosive men of the division. When it comes close to a medium range, I think Francis has proven he can stay relatively safe here, clinching when necessary and retreating out of range on occasion. He eats an elbow or a knee here and there, but ultimately I don't see any glaring weaknesses for him in the clinch. On the rare occasions he is on the back foot, his retreat is always linear, which means it's a relatively simple task to corner him. But even though he can get bear hugged against the fence, he always manages to push off and get away oftentimes making use of a half collar tie to whip opponents around. So there's a bit to be desired for the champ's defensive distancing, especially at range. There's just currently not a ton of guys in the division that will be able to capitalize on those weaknesses though. So for this category, he scores a seven. Let's examine defensive technique. Francis actually has some pretty good aspects to this part of his game, and most of those things are upper body related. He uses his lead hand to parry jabs so that he can counter with the rear hand, and even though he leaves that parry out there swatting a fair amount of the time, the implied threat of his counter is usually enough of a deterrent to that jab. He moves his head more than you might expect as well. Before I started researching him, I really couldn't remember him using that much head movement, but I think that's just because it's a bit more subtle. He slips to the left and right and has a good little fade back to get out of the way. Ngannou is usually on point with blocking and the more lateral punches and kicks that are aimed at his head, even against the very fast and explosive fighters. 
I don't think I've ever seen him use a traditional forward block though, which would definitely help him stop the linear punch combos. There's not many examples of fighters trying to attack Ngannou's body with any sort of consistency. He carries his hands around chest or middle level, so I don't think I'd be going out on a limb to say that he wouldn't have too much trouble protecting his midsection even if it was targeted. The first thing I have to be extremely critical about in this category is the way he addresses leg kicks, or perhaps it would be more accurate to say the way he doesn't address them. I couldn't find any examples of Francis properly checking a low kick, and I struggled to find examples of him defending them in any way at all. There was a couple times where he turned his shin out at the last second, which definitely gets the job done when it comes to calf kicks, but the thing nobody tells you about checking kicks is that even when you check them, they still fucking hurt if your shins aren't conditioned. And the guys who condition their shins are usually the ones that you will see regularly checking kicks. Francis is not one of those guys is what I'm getting at. There's been a few times when he got out of the range of kicks, but those were also heavily telegraphed and only thrown half-heartedly by his opponents. The fighters who actually committed to their kicks usually found success. Ngannou's preferred method of dealing with kicks is to simply eat them and try to counter. To be honest, it's worked well enough for him so far, but it's a strategy that will only remain viable so long as your leg is able to bear the weight of your counter shot. By the time you've eaten your third leg kick, that counter left hook isn't going to have much sting on it, if you're even able to throw it at all. It's something that Francis needs to have a better answer for going forward, because it's something that takes away from his best attribute, which is his power. The last thing I need to throw shade at for him in this category is his tendency to gas out quickly. Now before you rip me apart in the comments, let me just say that cardio and conditioning is not exactly a criteria for any of the key elements I go over. It's just an X factor that I will throw in when relevant. Everyone's technique is going to be garbage when they get tired, but when you get tired faster than most and then spend the rest of the fight stumbling around like a zombie, it's going to hurt you in the defensive categories. He has seemed to have learned his lesson from the first Stipe fight and doesn't blow his wad nearly as quickly, but the only fights that really support that argument is the Derek Lewis fight, so yeah, and the second Stipe fight. Every other fight has lasted less than a round, so it's hard to tell how much his gas tank has actually improved. There are some strong aspects to this part of his game, but there's also a lot that he needs to work on. For technical defense, he will score a 6.5. The last area of defense to go over is durability. Most Francis Ngannou fights happen so quickly that there's barely any time for him to get hit back. Due to his technical shortcomings though, there have been a few occasions where he's been clipped. I've gotta say, I was very impressed with Ngannou's ability to take punishment. It really seems like he's completely unaffected when being struck by some of the most powerful humans on the planet. Which is probably why I didn't actually remember how hard he's been hit before until I rewatched his fights. His durability isn't limited to his chin either. As I mentioned before, several of his opponents landed thudding leg kicks. To be fair, most of them were one and done, like in the case of Dos Santos and Blades, but still impressive given the elite level striking ability of Junior and the absolute tree trunk legs of Curtis. The man who hit Francis the hardest is without a doubt Stipe Miocic. He punched him pretty hard in both fights, but the first fight was most noteworthy. He appeared to have rocked Ngannou at least once, maybe twice depending on who you talk to, and Francis was still firing back very effectively. The skill level and power level of the shots he's taken is truly incredible, and I have to give him a lot of credit in that regard. When I compare Francis to the only person I've given a perfect score to in this category, that person being Max Holloway, the main differences between them are volume and experience. Max has fought in more five round wars and more fights in general, all while taking constant, unrelenting punishment. So while I would say Ngannou's chin is extremely commendable and ultimately the strongest part of his defense, I can't give him a perfect score. So for durability, he comes in at a 9.5. Time to go over what Francis Ngannou is best known for, his offensive abilities. First is offensive distancing, which is one of the most simplistic skills in striking, while at the same time being one of the most complicated to master. There are so many little nuances, ways to advance, trap, rotate, and corner. But at the end of the day, the goal is plain. Close the distance and bludgeon the enemy. 
and Ganu is one that tends to keep it on the more simplistic side, but I can't really argue with the results. The Predator's athletic prowess is undeniable, and it allows him to easily be one of the fastest and most explosive heavyweights in the sport, perhaps even of all time. The speed at which he is able to close the distance is alarming, and it's shown to be effective even against guys that are pretty agile themselves. Ngannou's usage of the uppercut is indicative of his knowledge of offensive distancing. When fighting a grappler, he'll oftentimes use the rear uppercut. It provides him the perfect amount of space to line up a beautiful uppercut as they shoot in for a takedown. Not that a lead uppercut wouldn't work in the same scenario, but it is a bit harder because the distance is shorter and angled in such a way so that there's significantly less space to be able to time and put power into. Ngannou will also pivot around opponents using the stance switch in order to provide power and superior angle to land from. Francis is extremely flat-footed when he isn't charging forward like a maniac, which should make him pretty easy to avoid. But even though his footwork can be slow and plodding, it's also relentless. Any type of lateral movement is a risk because Ngannou's ability to close the gap instantly and the tendency to blast escaping foes with vicious hooks. In regards to what the optimal range is for Francis, it is without a doubt punching range or medium range. He can do some work in the clinch, particularly with knees to the body, but he gets the most out of his explosiveness at a bit of a farther range. If I'm being honest, I would say that his method for keeping the fight in this range has failed him at times, most notably in the first Stipe fight. When it got to the later rounds, his only hope of winning the fight was maintaining that medium range and landing the Hail Mary knockout punch. The threat of his uppercut wasn't enough to keep Miocic off of him, and he got steamrolled for the rest of the battle. Besides that fight, we've seen Francis get extremely sloppy with his advance when he has an opponent that's retreating in desperation. He recklessly charges in, even stumbling over his own two feet in his haste at times. All things considered though, I was very tempted to give Francis the score of 9 or close to it for this category, but I decided against it. Francis has a very effective skill set for offensive distancing but it's not perfect and certainly lacking in some fundamentals when he gets overexcited. So for offensive distancing, I'll give him the score of 8.25. Now to cover offensive technique. This one was interesting because if there's anywhere he has improved over the years, it's definitely been in his offensive technique. Francis Ngannou for sure has a small group of preferred techniques that he sticks with and most of them are punching based techniques, but he actually has a very respectable kicking game as well. Because of his explosiveness, he will throw naked kicks before getting back out of range. Naked kicks, or single kicks, can oftentimes be countered with what is actually Ngannou's preferred method of addressing kicks, which is eating them and throwing a counter hook. But Francis throws kicks so sparingly and explodes so quickly into them, it makes it very difficult for opponents to avoid or counter off of them. He even goes upstairs with the kicks sometimes, which I think is very smart. To my knowledge, he's never finished or hurt anyone with kicks though, so I would like to see him throw more kicks and to set them up a little better. Circling back to Ngannou's punching techniques, his best three techniques by far are the right cross, shovel hooks with either hand, and his patented uppercut, which he throws from either stance. And I'm going to go over each one in detail. It may surprise you to find out that one of his best punches is a straight punch. It's usually led by a nice straight jab while he's exploding into range. And even though he hasn't knocked too many opponents out with the right cross, it's deadly accurate. And oftentimes it will hurt his opponents and initialize the finishing sequence. The other two punches I mentioned are usually the show closers. When Nganu bum rushes in while swinging those shovel hooks, he's throwing them from almost down by his waist, and it can be a very tricky angle to have to defend from, especially given their speed. If Francis was a video game character, his ultimate finishing move would without a doubt be the uppercut. As I mentioned, he can throw it from either stance, but tends to throw it more when he's going up against a grappler. It's not only his main way to address grapplers, but also his main way of countering fighters with good head movement. 
He's caught so many tough guys when they try to dip and duck out of the way of his hooks. He even showcased it in his training sessions with Cyril Gan, who is very defensively sound and still got hit with it. The uppercut is Ngannou's most versatile, most reliable, and most devastating tool in his toolbox. Ngannou will set those tools up with a surprising amount of fakes and feints, which is great, but sometimes he goes to the well a bit too much with the feints. And speaking of feints, he tends to bite on a lot of the feints of his opponents. Ngannou is a fantastic counter striker, and most of his finishes come by way of counter punch. But when he bites on those feints, he gives away his exact intentions and how he's going to counter. If he can't stop taking the bait on those fakes, he needs to at least switch up his intended counter if those more elusive strikers manage to get that initial read on him. I mentioned he has some elbows in the clinch and knees as well that he will throw to the body. I'd like to see more of those because they seem to be pretty effective when put to use. Speaking of body work, Francis does attack the body on occasion with straight punches, but this is an area of his technique that is extremely underutilized. It would not only open up more opportunities to set up that kill shot up top, but it would also sap the energy of fighters that have better cardio than him. When we look at all he has to offer from a technical point of view, it all goes out the window if he gets tired out, and Nganu has definitely shown that he can gas out in a fight. The first Stipe fight really exposed this weakness to his game, and he did a fantastic job of maintaining his energy in the second fight, but when you look at the Rosenstrike fight, which took place right before the Miocic rematch, there was absolutely no efficiency in that fight. In some ways, that knockout is his most impressive win because of how respected Jorginho is, but in many ways, it's also his most embarrassing win. He showed that when the mood takes him, he can completely lapse back into berserker mode, also known as using way too much energy mode. A technical fighter with a great chin may be able to handle those shots and win a war of attrition, just like Stipe did in their first fight. Part of Ngannou's issues with cardio is not just due to strategy, but also fundamentals at times. Even though he does have very good fundamentals, he displays the tendency to tense up on his combination and overextend on his shots. Like I said though, most of the time his movement is fluid and his combinations are crisp and he's one of the few heavyweights that will string together long combinations. So before I get too into the weeds in this category, I'm going to give him the score of 7.25. Last thing I'm going to break down is Nganu's power. Francis has made a career off of laying his opponents flat, but so have a lot of other fighters in the heavyweight division. So how does Nganu's power stack up against other knockout artists at the top of the food chain? When we examine his record and the nearly 20 fights that he's participated in to date, we can see that every single one of his wins was by finish. Other than a few submissions in his earlier career, he has 12 total knockouts. What's even more impressive is that all 12 of those knockouts and TKOs were achieved within two rounds. When we're talking about the highest level in the sport, that is rare, even for heavyweights. But most of you know by now that I'm really not a stats guy, so what does watching the tape show us? After watching all of Nganu's fights, I'm still kind of shocked by the violence of each one of those knockouts. The numbers simply don't do the Predator enough credit, because it's not just the fact that he's putting people out, it's the way he's doing it. His uppercut knockout from hell against Overeem will go down in history as one of the scariest knockouts ever. The way he folded Stipe in the rematch, I was legitimately scared that Stipe wouldn't be getting back up. Every punch he throws is like a thunderclap. Every combination is like a landslide of boulders. His kicks could probably fell a large tree if he threw more than one of them at a time. He's never finished or dropped anyone with a body shot, but I don't think that's for lack of power. I think it's more of a failing on his accuracy. Targeting the liver and the solar plexus is the best way to hurt somebody to the body. You'd be surprised how much punishment the rest of the human torso can handle, even when we're talking about Nganu's power. All in all, Francis Ngannou is the epitome of one-punch knockout power in both hands. He's the first person I've ever analyzed where I actually felt that a perfect score wasn't good enough. So I'm left to give the score of 11 out of 10 in spirit. And why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. But on paper, it will be the score of 10 for power.
When the scores are tallied up and I get the average, it gives Francis Ngannou the total grade of about 8.1 overall. I don't think it should come as much of a surprise to anyone that the man they call the Predator is a very aggressive and offensively talented fighter, making up for many of his technical shortcomings with raw destructive power and explosive athleticism. Based on recent improvements in Ngannou's game, I have the feeling that even when some of the athleticism starts to fade away with age, his technique will have caught up to level out his skill set and hopefully prolonging his career in the process. He will soon face Gan, who in many ways is the polar opposite to him. I will say that Gan is his first test and will probably be his most challenging test. But after analyzing Francis, I'm certain that he possesses a championship level skill set. So that just about does it for this episode of how good is their striking. If you want to see the scores that I've given everybody else for every category, you can check the link in the description. It has a spreadsheet of all that stuff. As always, we're doing the fight picking contests on the channel. And now we're doing a mega contest that is exclusive to channel members and patrons. We're giving away some awesome stuff for that contest. So by supporting the channel with just $1, you can join the contest and be a part of that. As always, make sure to like and subscribe and thanks so much for watching. Take care.